one. All right, guys, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for game number two. It's Southwest Baptist versus Missouri State. Going to be uh, switching the sides up right over there, and we will have Southwest Baptist now on the red side. And as always, I'm still returned, and that is still S. Ruff. How are we doing today? Well, pretty good. I mean, that first game was uh, interesting to see. Obviously, I, we mentioned before, this is, again, a, uh, a more of a club team versus a scholarship team. So it's kind of interesting to see the difference here. Uh, Missouri, their first uh, season in the CSL as a League of Legends team. And uh, they're they're pretty they, they 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 showed some struggles obviously against this side from Southern Baptist, but I feel like a lot of it could come down to draft this time. I feel like if they picked a little bit more for the early game, they might be in a better position. Exactly, because with the last competition, especially once again looking back down towards that bottom lane with Young Bobo uh, and Omnom Omniverse on the Ezreal Tom Kench picks respectively there just was no priority anywhere on the map and that meant the second that southwest baptist started to make those full map plays just started putting down uh Isaiah in that mid lane so incredibly hard which is gank after gank there's no way to respond and they were never able to hold on long enough so that their comp could actually become relevant i want to see if they're going to be picking maybe up a little bit more aggressive of a volley so they can go toe to toe or whether they're just going to try the same thing again, a few more bands added on top and re-roll. Yeah, the, the the Camille band and the Zoe band this time, pretty standard, I would think, after uh, that game like that, where Justice and Master Party showcasing that they both know how to play those champions relatively, if not extremely well, because Camille got that triple kill on the top lane, and Zoe was just bullying uh, Isaiah in the middle lane. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what they're going to pick out this time. Obviously, a little bit deeper of a champion pool, hopefully, for S Southern Baptist. See what they decide to pull out this time, as the Sejuani is going to be the first pick this time for the side of Missouri State. A very good hero, I feel, or champion, I feel like. Uh, very good engage, good tankiness, ability to kind of help out in the game. Maybe a little bit slower jungle again, but still has the ability to actually gank on like a Warwick, I feel like. Oh yeah, without a doubt, Sejuani is in that S tier of jungler right alongside the J4 because of her early ganking ability. And I mean, we were talking about getting some more uh, ability to play through that early game. They're showing exactly how they want to do it with a Sejuani in the jungle can get gank after gank in, plus a Thresh. They might just be looking to win out this one early. Yeah, uh, Om Nom Nomnivore was doing pretty good last game with his uh, Tam Ws to save his teammates and keep them alive. Like, uh, there's a couple of instances where he flat out just saved his teammates. So it'll be interesting to see maybe kind of empowering him a little bit more by giving him a Thresh, giving him the ability to make some plays, use that Lantern to get things out going on. So Exactly, but Southwest, ba Southwest Baptist still has one more pick in their disposal. They're going to go with the Braum uh, once again. Plus the Zach giving them just a little more ability to play through their side of the map. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Zaya going to be uh, locked in, which is going to be the first adaptation we see the entire match. Yeah, sorry about that. It is Southwest Baptist. I got confused because I keep looking at their SBU uh, icons. I'm like, ah, that's just one letter. You know, there's no West in there. But yes, it is Southwest Baptist, guys. Sorry about that. And they do pick up a Zaya, and they are going to ban the Malzahar. Obviously, Malzahar was played by Isaiah last game, but not too good on it. But obviously, Malzahar is a pretty high tier pick uh, still. And uh, we'll, uh, I feel like it's a decent ban, followed by an Oriana ban. And I want to see how they play around this, because this is something we haven't actually hit on before. It's the Vayne ADC, who d has received some nerfs. Uh, less damage on the ultimate, just overall. And definitely also the nerf to the uh, Relic Shield, plus Overheal, plus Fleet Footwork line of just got, buying the early items. Hurts her a lot in that laning phase, especially against some of these more poke-based bot lanes, potentially with like a Karma, with a Lulu. Things to that extent can very easily shut them down. And on top of that note, the roaming mid laner in LeBlancan, you know that Southern ba Southwest Baptist, they have their eyes directly fixed on this bottom lane. Yeah, and it looks like he's going to try. It looks like they're going to go with a Karma to go into this LeBlanc. A uh, fairly safe pick with being able to shield yourself, but lots of team utility in a Karma. I really enjoy Karma as a hero. I was enjoying her a lot last year when she's being played in support role and switch the mid sometimes. Uh, kind of an interesting uh, flex champion as it is. As we see the tank top Orin come out to round out the team comp for the side of Missouri State. But that's what they forgot to ban this time. That is what they sacrificed for the Camille, for the the uh, Zoe ban as well. Jace is available, and if you want one thing that's going to beat out Orn at nearly every stage of the game, except maybe being a teamfight tank, that is the pick to go to. And already, 
I still think South uh, Southwest Baptist has a much stronger overall composition, not just with how they play, but uh, the way their champions are going to look together to hit those early spikes, two items on the Zion, really just roll over from there. But there's a lot of gaps still in this Missouri State University squad. And Karma in the mid lane, bit of a warning sign for me. I mean, sure, if you want something that's going to push out the lane in the early game, that is the go-to pick. I mean, if you're looking for something safe into LeBlanc, the Morgana is still around. But curious yeah. to see how they play through this. And now that they have at least some priority in their lanes, especially the mid lane, if they can use that to turn into some sort of actual advantages, that could be how they fix their problems. Yeah, and also if we think about it as well, as we talked about their win conditions early on, about young Bobo being their their focal point around their team, putting him on something like a vein that is traditionally a more carry uh, ADC that's looking to just go off and crush people mid to late game, uh, it, much much more of an aggressive pick compared to the Ezreal. And with the pairing it with the Thresh, we'll see if they'll be able to do anything in this bot lane, because obviously it was kind of just like a standoff in bot lane, until the side of Southern or Southwest Baptist comes in with their jungler and their mid laner and just rolled them over and killed everyone. So the 2v2 went okay. And then the 1v1 up top went okay as well. We'll see if the uh, Master Party is able to kind of force this in. And again, we'll have to see where Titan Dog decides to go. Is he going to go back to that mid lane and kind of just bully uh, Isaiah around? Or is he going to try and uh, make some plays onto the top lane where he has a little bit more damage now? Or the bot lane where it's not as safe? Exactly. With Missouri State, has a lot more in the way of just with full map priority and pressure around the map. But the big thing for them is if, if you're a Missouri State fan, this is where you start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. They have a fairly decent late game scaling. Sure, Karma's not going to be the most intensive late game champ in the world. Falls off pretty hard, at least damage wise. But if they're looking to play that ADC centric style, Vayne on the ADC while some mid game priority towards the mid lane and still good frontline tanks around the squad. They've built it so far, and this game now exclusively relies around young Bobo doing well. If he gets shut down, there is no team remaining for Missouri State. Yeah, if, if they can shut down young Bobo from the side of Southwest Baptist, they're going to have a hard time unless Isaiah goes off. But then again, there's a ticking time clock on that to the point where he starts to fall off after getting ahead. So they're gonna, they have to find a focus on either the bot lane or the mid lane to try and keep them at least even. If both of them the even, I feel like they could have a much better chance into like the mid game because their team fight's so good with Orin and Sejuani. Everyone on their team is a great team fighter. They just need to not fall behind in the relating phase and be able to move into that mid game with a little bit of confidence, hopefully not being so far but down like they were last time. Exactly. And a big thing that it does come now from this top lane, especially with the Orin v. Jace matchup. It requires Sejuani if Joshi wants to be relevant in this game at all. And that's actually a great adaptation from a Southwest Baptist that basically says, okay, yeah, you want to just camp bottom lane. We're just going to win out the top side of the map completely. And Jace is one of those carries that if he gets ahead, he can nearly solo uh, carry the rest of this game. But before we get into game number two here, do have a few words from our sponsors. Our oh so amazing sponsors. First, which is going to be Twitch. And as always, nothing but gratitude for the largest streaming platform in gaming to support collegiate esports. From PAX East and West and many more events, the CSL would not be what it is today without the help and support from them. Be on the lookout for more cool opportunities to get involved with Twitch in the near future. Be sure to show them some love and support on their sites for twitter.com slash twitch or facebook.com slash twitch or this wonderful website you are already on. And also, if you can't watch us live, make sure to rewatch our shows or catch any of the uh, game slash shows you have missed over on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash user slash cstarleague. Catch all VODs of our events over on them. And I did take the liberty to throw up that exclamation mark to Discord in chat as well, guys. If you want to join the, the Discord community for the CSL, you can meet with other players from different schools, uh, get all the updates of when we go live, stuff like that. That Discord link is in chat, so feel free to join in there. It's always a good time to just sit and have a good conversation sometimes with some cool people. Yep, and you also get in touch with any of our staff if need be. If you're having some issues with the CSL, we are always happy to help. And also, if you do uh, like what you see, make sure that you guys sign up all of your colleges if you are not in the leagues just yet, because we got some pretty great competitions coming to you. But looks like we're going to get loaded up into game here for game number two. Yeah, it looks like I might actually be loaded in this time. <laughs> Perfect. Always great to have two casters at the start of every single game. And... Now, I want to see where are they going to 
I'll actually allocate the resources on this early part of the map. Last game, we did see Southwest Baptist with a little bit more aggressive of a strategy. I'm curious to see what they go with this match. Yep. We'll, we'll see how it goes with everything panning out here. It looks like we're not going to see League of uh, Stopwatches here, though. It looks like there's only two, one stopwatch on each side as we load up in a game. That's always something interesting to see with those uh, new items coming into play from the, the mastery and the slash of runes changes. But it looks like we got four-man bot lane. It looks like they're looking for an invade from Southwest Baptist. And they have to be careful around that bot lane tribush for the side of... Because they're not going to see this one come on through Missouri State. they got to be careful. Oh, yeah, he's by oh. himself. He does have the roll. It looks like he should be okay. Bit of, bit of a misplay there. And that's not really going to give them any information about where Manus is starting. And once again, that opens up the other side of the map uh, for Missouri State to go in and grab that additional vision. And wait a second. Why is there a control ward already coming up for Zaya? I was, uh, I was about to say that. Yeah, it looks like Zaya on that Karma opened up with a pink ward. And he throws that up into the brush right above the uh, pit there. A flash comes out from Om Nomnivore because he almost got caught. This is exactly what they were looking to do. Come back in and look for a rotation. They get a flash, which isn't bad, and they have the vision. So they should know where he's starting at that blue buff now. Certainly a bit of a late game, an early game investment from Zaya. And going to be careful against the LeBlanc magic because now he has absolutely no way to sustain up in lane. No pots to fall back on. Here but... comes the saddest part of the world where Jace just walks through the brush and sees Oh, no! And oh. He doesn't stop to kill it, it looks like, and he's just going to go to lane. But obviously, they know the ward's there now, so they should be cleared out when Zach makes his rotation up top. Well, I hope, because if he never called it out, they might have zero idea. And the idea with that ward is that Zaya just doesn't want to be ganked constantly again. And Grabbing control of that ward uh, behind the red buff is definitely important with that, making sure Zach can't just walk through there. But the sad part for me is, if you look right here, they're not actually able to see if he was to rock over from Raptors. This only catches you if you come yeah. behind the red buff pit. And... That's a misplacement on that ward. It needed to be uh, a little bit down in that brush. It's, oh my goodness. Uh, it looks like some back and forth going there. Justice going in a little bit ham on Isaiah. And actually, they trade pretty back and forth there. Karma actually ahead on the life here. But it shouldn't matter too much because he started with the, the Corrupting Potion on LeBlanc. So you should be able to just sustain up a little bit here. Exactly. And that's where you're going to see the difference in this early game. Justice is going to be able to get up back towards that 3 4 if not full HP, just off those charges alone. And Zaya is now forced to stay in this very disadvantageous lane, which could lead to Justice blowing the sums once again. Oh, hook on, on the Brahm on the bottom lane, but here comes Justice back in in mid lane, does land the change, but does decide to get back out after landing him. And it looks like nothing came up from, from bot anyway. Zach comes in, Flash comes out from Karma, and she's gonna use her shield to get her out of there. Um, kind of an odd gank path there, but it looks like Zach, is he gonna go kill that board? Or do they not call it No out? idea like of it. They haven't called, they have no idea that it's there. Luckily, it's not in the best position, so it's not giving out over the most information, like we mentioned, but still a little nice thing to have. Sejuani, though, here comes the Rome bot. This is a really good Rome. They're really far pushed up. They do land the stun onto the Zaya, and they are focusing her down. She's still alive, though. What? The heal came out. Give her enough to uh, stay alive there. The, the heal from Young Bobo, though, was late only onto himself and the Thresh. I feel like that could have been used earlier to keep the Sejuani alive, and then they wouldn't have given over the first blood. So a little bit of a misplay there, but... I, uh, I guess the, 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 the side note here is that there is double buffs on this main now. Oh, Time Dogs, I has no flash. Here comes, diving into the mid lane, and now yeah, that's an easy kill. Good job by Titan Dog. He's very aware of what ability, or what summoners uh, people have up, and he's very, very good at abusing them uh, when they're down. Uh, that's two games in a row that we've seen him just make little short loops into the jungle, maybe to get some vision, and come right back to lane to take a gank after pulling off that, or forcing Isaiah to use that flash. Yeah, exactly, and that was just so much over-aggression and greed from Isaiah. It just wasn't necessary at that point. You have the TP. The summoner spell you take exclusively to get back into lane in the early game, but no teleport, right? no no flash available, very little HP, and decide to stay in that lane with no vision of where Titan Dogs is. And you're going to get knocked down for that every single time. And the door to entry, the way... That Southern Baptist, Southwest Baptist is now going to get back into this game. It's been wide open. They're they're in a they're in a great spot here. They have again an early lead on their LeBlanc, and then obviously that gank bottom where they were in a uh, 
2v3 situation where they do end up getting first blood also helps out there is the Dr. Santa on Zaya as well. Exactly, once more. They are still looking for a fairly cheap back here at the start of the game. The side for Southern Baptist only needs to hit that choice spike before Dark Santa is going to be able to really take these fights. The great thing about picking Zaya is that you can still go the crit route while being uh, a lot more impactful a lot earlier on. And also, once again, mid lane, no pot at all. Yeah, it's an interesting choice to go into a LeBlanc with no, no no early magic resist, no pots, and she's just poking them out. Like, it's obviously happening already. Here comes a gank back bottom, really focusing on the spot lane. Does not land the stun, though, and this is going to be bad for him. The counter gank comes in from the Zac. The Lantern pulls out the Sitwani. But uh, it looks like uh, it's going to be kind of a wash. But again, Titan Dog noticing, again, I have to praise him for his jungling, noticing that they're trying to focus the spot lane. And, you know, and they have good vision now. They have a couple more uh, control wards on the map and stuff like that. So he's able to rotate down and kind of stop these ganks on the bot lane. And now they're actually going to turn it around to a dive. Flash from Vayne comes out. She gets out of a lot of it. And now this is actually turning into a very awkward dive. Stun goes on to Zach. He's going to be in a lot of trouble here. Doesn't have aggro from the turret though, so that's a benefit to him. And there's plenty of minions for, him, for them to be able to kind of get back out on. Is he going to stay? He has his passes up, so he wants to dive in. Yeah, Master Party does have the teleport if he needs to follow up on the gank, but already such low HP bars. Nearly nobody on the side for Southwood Baptist has mana aside from DeLeo. Well, one of the champions doesn't even use mana, but yeah. uh, besides all that, everyone's so low. Threshold it doesn't quite hit anyone. Yeah, he's trying to fish on some of those hooks. Uh, most of his hooks have hit Braum so far, but I mean, you kind of have to just go with whatever you can. But now they're in a lot of trouble here because they have not gone back to buy, and they're recalling while their turret is being pushed. Obviously, Titan Dog doing exactly what he wants to do here and sit there, let himself regen a little bit passively. And now they're just going to three man push this turret. This is a really awkward position and a really awkward call from the side of Missouri State to kind of just let them have this bottom turret. And look at that, even worse is they're not able to do anything else around the map. Still a hard victory in lane for Justice so far in the mid lane. Level 6 to level 5, more CS by nearly that 10 CS margin. And then there's top lane, the unsung hero for Sweat Baptist so far. Master Party, he's 59 to 42 and he's also got that lethality on the first back. He is ready to put the pain down. And there's the pain right there as he half healths the horn, and the horn's gonna have to go back out. That that turret did not fall bot, but it does have very little health left. It actually only has 817 health left, so it should go down fairly quickly. But again, they kind of forced out a triple recall from the side of Missouri, and with the jungler and both uh, Thresh and uh, Vayne kind of recalling, there was just they had no way of defending it, and there's no way to make any presence on the other side of the map because half your team's in base. Without a doubt, and. Still, Master Party has the TP in the top lane, can use that to impact down the lane if he needs be, and needs to. But right now for Missouri, they've picked a lot of early game priority, especially with the mid lane, which is now losing. Vayne has a kill, but it's very far from the 4-5 which she would like to be, and here's another fight. Yeah, here comes the, the roam from bot lane again from this Braum. Gonna get the stacks up. Not fast enough, it looks like, so there's no stun until just there. Uh, Cook comes out because the rotation was coming up from the, the side of Missouri's bot lane, but they were clearing out a pink board at the Dragon Pit first. So uh, trying to get some vision there. Uh, Vision's gonna be traded out here, looks like. As Dr. Santa goes in to get that pink ward in the back of the pit. Looks like they might go for a cheeky hook here, maybe? No. They might around the corner. They don't have vision, so it'd be a blind hook from Omnom Nomnivore. Yeah, and here they come around. He comes around to try and land a hook. Oh! Does land the hook. That was actually pretty impressive. But, but no, there's no way follow to follow up. up. Yeah, I don't think they were going to be able to follow that one up at all either way. So I mean, they uh, had they had Manus there, but big part was they did, had no idea where Tyne Dog is. Sure, he's low on HP in the top side, but they had no idea with that. And no vision really hurts your ability to make some of these plays because if they try to make that play, got it turned around by Tyne Dog. That just increases the 2k gold lead even further. First tower would not be fall be far behind. Yeah, so we have to commend them for, for um, nom nom the war there for not pulling the trigger and kind of just like letting it go, even though he did land a good hook onto the vein, because, or not the vein, onto the uh, Zaya. He has the vein. Just not have the follow up and just too risky to try and go 2v2 there, especially with, un like you said, unknowing where Titan Dog is because he's he's been there for the counter picks all the time. That hook misses. Ooh. A good fancy forward from uh, DeLeo, but honestly right there, commending them for not taking that hook is like commending yourself for shooting yourself in the leg but not hitting an artery. Like, yeah, you're still alive, but that's probably not the thing you want to be doing at the moment. Yeah, uh, they I, really I'm need sure to... they want to be <laughs> Yeah. They need to work on this vision game a little bit because 
They're making the plays, they're just not able to follow up Here comes here. the dive. Oh boy. Thresh gets caught out, or that's Bane, sorry. Or, uh, well, they look both the same because of their stupid skins. Thresh gets caught out, but he ends up flashing away. He's still alive, he's still running. Flash from Zack comes in. Play comes out to get him away, and then he's also gonna throw out the exhaust to keep himself alive. Uh oh, young Bobo just walked into a bush with a master party Jace in it, and he just got hammered off the face of the earth. That was looking actually fairly decent for the side of Missouri after the rush got out, but he was trying to roll back in for the re-engage and ends up just getting obliterated by Master Party, who had matched the teleport from the Orn. And that just uh I just a great escape by from Om Nom Nomivore, but the rest of his team just gets obliterated. I mean, insert insert statement about shooting self in leg here, but uh, already so much going wrong uh, for the side of Missouri State, and then right when they need it the least, Master Party shows up saying, "Yay, yeah, guys, you remember me? I'm currently winning top lane by about 39 CS, uh, pops running down and smacks Young Bobo right into next week's match. Definitely coming up pretty, not well, just not well for them. Uh, Vintlane already getting a pretty solid advantage to Justice. Once he picks up the Hextech Gunblade, which he's already got most components for, he's going to be this massive split push presence. And between Master Party and Justice, they are able just to split this map apart. And here comes the problem as well for the side of Missouri State a little bit, is the fact that Zaya is ahead over the vein. And when you're a team that plays around your ADC, you don't want the enemy ADC to be ahead of your ADC. It doesn't work out very well in your favor most of the time. Uh, we see an Essence Reaper already competed for a Dr. Santa, and he hasn't even finished his call yet. His call is still building stacks and hasn't gotten the bonus gold from it. He's already quite a bit ahead of this uh, vein and... Uh, Young Bobo is going to have a hard time coming back from it. The actual gold difference on them is... There's a 1,200 gold difference on the two of them because of the turrets and the early, early kills. Uh, gank comes in, it looks like. They tried to just do a four-man gank onto the low Blanc, and it unfortunately doesn't work. The hook missed, the Sejuani ult missed, and LeBlanc just kind of dashed away. Really, really unfortunate for Missouri State as they keep trying to look for plays and are just unable to find anything and they're in a really bad spot now because they have no Sejuani all and uh, Jace is just doing Jace things after uh, a lane slap happens and is uh, knocking on this tier 2 bottom already. But yeah, while they brought everyone up to deal with top lane, there is nobody covering Master Party and sure you're not going to lose a T1 but you're going to lose a T2 on the bottom portion of that map unless somebody, God forbid, is able to actually go down there and stop him but yeah, that's not happening anytime soon. Yeah, Joshi is just now making his way already way over there and it's already gone. Just out rotated again, showcasing what they need to do. Here comes the ulti from Braum out. A little bit of a fight happening in top lane. Zach comes back in, pulls the vein back in. She does flash out and barely lives until the Zaya ulti comes out and cleans up house. Oh. Again, Titan Dog in the right place at the right time, constantly with these counter engages. And this time, Sejuani trying to get out, trying to run away from her team, but it's not going to work. Uh, the stopwatch comes out, and this is going to be a tier two cleaned up. And three more kills for the side of Southwest Baptist. A really clean uh, macro play across the map here as they uh, have, in first game and this game, switch sides immediately after they take down a turret and just rotate back in. It looks like a fight coming in mid lane, though. The Orn all did miss uh, onto the low health of Long. But again, look, LeBlanc and Jace, completely uncontested in mid lane, just taking another turret down, and Missouri State is just struggling to find any sort of foothold in this game right now. There's basically no member of uh, Missouri State that can fight any member of Southwest Baptist. It's just completely unmatchable across the board. And on top of that, all the kills that Dr. Santa personally picked up on that last play, he's gonna be at the two-item spike, and the game cannot be that far behind. I mean... Southwest Baptist, they're not happy with how quickly they ended the last game. They want to do it even faster. Yeah, they're, they're, they're doing exactly that, too. The gold lead just skyrockets as they take four turrets across the map with a bunch of extra kills and the Rift Herald as well, which they should throw down in mid lane, hopefully, to help push that down to go for uh, objectives there. But uh, this time, they didn't have a, the advantage with the Drakes. They are going to have an Infernal Drake coming up here as the next Drake. Uh, well, the Cloud Drake was their first Drake. Some people really, really don't like Cloud Drakes. I love Cloud Drakes because I think movement speed's great. But uh, obviously, some people are going to be like, oh, obviously damage is better. As, uh-oh, Joshi caught out bottom lane. Justice is going to just go all in on him, it looks like, and just take him out because he has no help here. He's going to get auto-attacked down by Joshi. Yeah, Justice just... Oh, here comes the rotation, though. Uh-oh, Sejuani might help. be able to... I think, it, I think it saves him. And that's it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll it buy that much. Him. 
Uh, but just but as, again, with, how much is the save worth your Sejuani ult as your main initiation? Yeah, on top of that, that's still the Hextech gunplay completed for Justice. He's going to be able to yep, stay and up. And then another fight Hello? comes in as we hit a pause Wait immediately a as that fight comes in. Uh, it looks like they had a DC in the middle of that, but I don't know if that one says it's going to help because you're dead, homie. I mean, Isaiah, yeah, sure, you're going to reconnect, but you're also going to reconnect to being knocked up in the middle of a team fight. So, uh, not sure what, how... I don't think he's even going to hit the ground before... His life uh, goes away. It, I think it depends on who Dr. Santa is shooting at the time, because it, whoever he's shooting will die first. And he, I think he's a little bit closer to the Sejuani, but he might be running towards I'm, there to just finish him. I mean, Time Dog probably also, with how big he's got in this match, has the resources to just kill uh, off yeah. Dr. Santa himself. Maybe even looking for the Q double shot, but just look at the map. This is the three-man squad for Southwood Baptist that I'm fairly sure can 3v5 at this point. While you still have a split-pushing member in the bottom lane on Justice, you still have a split-pushing member in the top lane with this party who nobody can stack up to. Even that last play where Justice got knocked down a little bit, that's the power of Hextech Gunblade on top of LeBlanc. It's why we saw her come back into the meta last season. Because you get health back based off every ability you use, even against minions, meaning you have so much sustain in these poke-based hospital uh, fights, but looks like he hits the ground, but not going to mean too much in that fight. Yeah, I was going to say, it wasn't going to live very long. I wasn't. We were just debating if she was going to make it back to the ground or not, basically. But again, this has been the, uh, I want to say, this is the Titan Dog show, because he's just everywhere on the map. Like, it seems like every chance that Missouri has had, Missouri State has had, is just been completely sought out and seen by Titan Dog just to come in and uh oh here comes uh, a 1v2 in top lane the exhaust comes out might be able to catch him down is there no ulti nope there isn't but it doesn't matter because the auto attacks from Master Party are going to shut down the vein and that was a 1v2 from the Jace essentially I mean uh, Thresh wasn't there at the beginning but he still cleans it up even though there was an exhaust used and a flash from Thresh as well so as they rotate to the bottom side of the map this is gonna be a five-man push here they're actually gonna use the Rift Herald right here right now to push this in this is gonna be an inhibitor fairly quickly I believe here comes the Ornal we'll see where it goes it only goes on to Dr. Santa and the Zaya but here we go Zach jumps in three-man knockup three-man ultimate and then instantly Zaya cleans everybody up three people die instantly followed by the Thresh oh my goodness that was brutal Beautiful combo, wombo combo play from the side of Southwest Baptist. Zach's still looking for more. With four people down, there's not a whole lot they can do. And they're just going to look to end the game here. They have the Rift Herald helping push. It's going to get targeted down by the turrets. But this is a 16-minute game. You weren't kidding when they said they wanted to finish it earlier. Zaya gets the vein, and that's going to be it. We're going to have a, a pre-17-minute game from the side of Southwest Baptist. Talk about Snowball. But uh-oh, here comes the reses. And we're going to have one more fight, it looks like, before this goes out. Sejuani throws the ulti and it doesn't get a whole lot done. Looks like uh, Jace does get taken out in the middle of the fight. Zaya kills up Thresh, but they're going to just focus down the Nexus. And we have a 16 minute and 43 second game for the side of Southwest Baptist. And that was that was just really, again, I mean, it's a snowball and kind of a smash fest. But that was just, I, I'm impressed. That's good to see from a team that has the uh, scholarship backing now to come out and just make clean plays and show that they know what they're doing. These are these are moves and stuff like that that all teams should, I feel like, but don't always do. I mean, I'm not going to toot the horn of Southwood Raptors too much. They played very well. They played very clean for their uh, matchup, but I don't think there really was a matchup there. Missouri State, it felt like co-op versus AI, to be completely honest. Missouri could never find an answer in any stage of the game, whether it be pick and ban, early game, mid game, or the quote-unquote late game of 16 minutes. Uh, they couldn't find any answers at any point in time. Great play so far coming out of their jungler, coming out for the man of Titan Dog 21, just finding all those nooks and crannies. And this game, Isaiah just made so many questionable decisions. The overstay in the mid lane, the not taking any, any sort of sustain, uh, no refillable pot, no pots. I mean, he did get the... Uh, the one rune that gives you the bonus biscuits, the everlasting biscuits, throughout the laning phase, but you only get four of those, and you're already losing to justice, and just all of these small mistakes just compounding on each other over and over to just rip this game apart. Yeah, and I, I feel like, uh, just, just for the side of Missouri, I, they had some moments they just uh, to make plays and stuff like that, but uh, like I said, Titan Dog in those plays was almost always on top of the three-man ganks they were going for, on top of anything they were ready for 
uh, Southwest Baptist was had the vision or uh, were already on the rotations to counter most of those plays. So, I mean, again, we throw it out there. We mentioned it before. This is Southwest Baptist, mm-hmm. who is a scholarship team versus a esports club, which is a non-scholarship team from the side of Missouri State. So thumbs up to Missouri State for coming out here, though, and doing their best. Obviously, maybe a little bit more work in. I feel like rotations were their biggest problem. They got out rotated really hard from the side of Southwest Baptist, but they did, they did, they did have the ideas they had the ideas of where to go they just didn't have the execution <laughs> they they knew they wanted to play league of legends uh that's definitely the first step and certainly a lot of work to be done in this off season uh still two weeks left remaining but now officially knocked out of the playoffs we'll be most likely headed towards that team cup so hey maybe we're going to see a resurgence there but southwest yeah. baptist i want to see how they now stack up to next week teams because they're probably going to have to go against now someone who's three and one i mean they could go against lords for uh all the standings <laughs> Didn't they already lose the Lords? Well, yeah, they lost really hard to Lords, but now Lords losing the matchup to Columbia College earlier in the day are also 3-1, and one, so uh, definitely a very steep road left to travel if you want to make it to those conference championships. But, I mean, once you get to the playoffs, anything is possible, so uh, full speed to them. But they are definitely going to show South Baptist how... Uh, they're going to show Missouri State how it's done, and that 16-minute win just so uh, so fast. Yeah, especially that I, we that first game they, they cruised through it pretty well, but then you said that second game, sixteen minutes is is nothing. Like I said, that's why I give I'm giving them props. Obviously, it's a little bit of a mismatched fight, but it takes a lot to be able to get everyone moving in the same direction and to close out objectives like that in any MOBA, let alone you know even especially when you're stomping. Because normally when people stomp, they get to the point where they're like, ah, oh, I can do whatever I want. Let's have fun. But obviously, keeping the mentality there. Just it show it, it shows promise is what I want to say. It shows a lot of promise for their team, and it I have I, I honestly if they don't do well for the rest of this year, I have high hopes for this uh, this um, how do I want to call this club team uh, school uh, in the future. I have high hopes for their program in the future. That's the word I'm looking for is program. All right, well hopes are not and all that aside, thank you guys for checking out our stream today, and that will be the end of our weekend coverage for the Collegiate Star League Varsity D1. Uh, programs here. I've still been returned. This has been SRF. If you guys liked what we did or like Cash in particular, you can follow us here with our tags below. Also, make sure you keep up to date with all of what we're doing here at the Collegiate Star League. Uh, hit up with a exclamation point Discord over in the chat to join our Discord channel. Stay up to date whenever we have another match or whenever we have another stream. But other than that, that's going to be it for today. Once again, thank you over to Twitch. Thank you over to YouTube. And thank you to our two teams for joining us today. But without further ado, we will see you guys. Uh, most likely this week with some Wednesday coverage of some JV teams, followed by, once again, week number five, Varsity Week, coming up soon. And playoffs are just around the corner, so keep in touch. But that's going to be it for today. See you guys later. Have a good one, guys.